go through artichokes. Variation. Up, funny. Starting from the top, we are working on this part, figuring out the fingering, and let's see. So. Okay, that's pretty straightforward, right hand. Normal, and then.
operating on like two hours of sleep. So we're gonna do the best that we can, but if it's not perfect, that's okay. You know, you have to be okay with not being perfect. Okay, so it's gonna be. I think let's leave these two these this these two lines aside for now. We'll wait until a day when my brain is feeling a little better. And let's do a, I mean, we're out of time, but let's just do one random number generator and play till the end. <laughs> Measure two, no, not happening. Starting from anywhere from seven to 32. So it says 21, what's 21? 21 is here. Okay. Ah. So after we finish, yeah, I know, I know time's up. After we finish doing the first two lines, we're gonna have to use the metronome and go through this whole entire thing here. All right, five minutes start, and let's do some scales. Um, last time we did this. from concepts taught in the book, The Inner Game of Tennis, in which he tells the author, who is a tennis coach, tells his students not to, you know, hold the grip, the, the tennis racket a certain way, but he tells them to, like, pay attention to um, when, when the ball connects with the racket and when it hits the ground. And he calls um, bounce, hit. He, he tells them to actually say it out loud. Bounce, hit, bounce, hit. And they're so busy counting the bounce hits that they don't pay attention to like, oh, I need to stand this way or that way, I need to hold my racket, so-and-so. And I think that's the same thing with um, piano when you group things together like... You're no longer thinking about how awkward the whole thing is. I mean, you still know that it's awkward, but you're not thinking about that. And you're not thinking about how clumsy your fingers are or whatever. You're just thinking one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. To, to the dominant sevens, but I have a feeling the dominant sevens will be slightly easier because it feels it's easier to do that than that because this is a raised a raised note. So so my process right now, but you know processes can change up. You don't want to get stuck on one system or process to the point where you have no creativity and your brain starts going to rote memorization mode. So I want to do. But for now, the process is block it this way. Do that a few times. That's, um, this is how to practice seventh chord arpeggios. So block. arpeggio but um didn't last okay let's move on to um well i mean the full five minutes air <sighs> really feeling a little whew, out of it and then the next step to be 
super crazy is um, is to play. So this, start from G. I make this the first note of a dominant seventh chord.